I think it's more likely than not that Jalen Hurts is the quarterback of this team in, in, in 2022 at this point. Um, but if I can get that type of player and that door is open for me, it's you. I love you, but you'll, you'll find another gig. You're good enough. And he'll be here as a backup or they'll trade him. Because of Jalen Rager, they're successful in the running game. They want his traits on the field. They think his traits are important on the field. I get what you're saying. He's not productive. I'm the one who said he's played himself off the field. I would try John Hightower because he's he gives you that same trait as far as speed. He is John McMullen. I am Jerry McDonald. That makes you smack a Mac Birds 365. Thank you for tuning in. And oh, by the way, please like the show. Come on. Yeah, you might not like what the Eagles did this past Sunday against the Giants. Nobody does. Doesn't mean you can't like the show. Hit that like button. We need your help. Uh, by the way, Jody, uh, we are loved in Switzerland. Somebody Who, what, where? Us, yeah. How the hell do you know that? Uh, somebody sent us a tweet. Uh, your show was also loved in Switzerland. 136 minutes. They showed the screenshot for a total of 14,650 minutes from Switzerland. Joseph. Get out of here. Yeah, a Birds fan in Switzerland? Oh, yeah. They're all over. See, here's the, reason, of... here's the reason why I have trouble believing that. Isn't Switzerland like the most neutral country on the planet that they <laughs> don't get involved? The one yeah, thing you should. can't say about Eagles fans is they are neutral. Yeah, they're neutral. No, they're they're usually very opinionated yeah. and come down strong on one side or the other. I don't see. Well, maybe that's yeah. why he's listening to Bird sixty five because he's actually a misfit in Switzerland because yeah, they, there's nothing neutral about Florida. By the people. way, it is December as well. I want to get this in. So players of the month are coming out. Jake Elliott, congratulations, NFC Special Teams Player of the Month. For November. That's, yeah, uh, nice. that's the good news. The bad news, the Offensive Player of the Month, Justin Jefferson. On the week, on the Way to rub salt in the wounds there, McMullen. Uh, uh, hey, the facts are the facts are the facts, and you got to yeah. deal with them. Um, I don't want to talk about Jefferson or uh, Elliott. I do want to talk about the quarterback, Jalen Hurts. Um and he is quickly becoming, I'm actually a little surprised by this, um, what I like to call a lightning rod player. And there have been many of them here in Philadelphia over the years that people feel the need to take a strong stance with or against. And certainly Carson Wentz became that last year here in Philadelphia with people defending him and or uh, wanting him to run out of town. And then, of course, when he ran himself out of town, good riddance to bad rubbish. Uh, I did not think that was going to be Jalen Hurts because he's such a laid back kind of guy that he's not going to say something that's going to generate that much uh, emotion from Eagle fans. And he did. He was laid back again yesterday. You're going to play? Yeah. You're going to be good to go? Yeah. That's about it. That's all you can get out of uh, the quarterback yeah. of the Eagles. But for whatever reason he has become, and I get it, if there's one position on one team in this town that is going to generate emotion, it's the quarterback position on the Philadelphia Eagles. But I thought Hurts might be the exception, not the rule. Um, no, people have strong opinions on Jalen Hurts and whether he's good enough now, going to be good enough going forward for the future. I've been all year long very consistent. Why do I have to decide now? Yeah. Everybody wants, well, is he good enough? Every let, week, let him Jody. continue to play. Let's continue to evaluate. I don't have to make call right now. The Eagles don't have to make call right now. Nobody's got to make. They said before the year, it's a transition year. They're going to give him the entire year. Well, John, the clock's ticking. We're down to just five games left. And there are five games against marginal defenses, including the Dallas Cowboys, which is the last game of the season, which – who the hell knows what that could, are the Cowboys even going to play their top players? We don't even know that yet, but none of the teams left on the Eagles schedule. Do you, you say, wow, that defense is tough. That's going to be a tough team to score points against. Washington. No, surprisingly thought they were going to be one of the better defenses in football. They've been mediocre. The giants, despite holding Eagles to seven points last year, up until that point had not been a very good defense. The jets, 
sorry to say, are not a very good defense. They should be able to score points coming down the stretch here. Jalen Hurts will probably make or break his future with the Philadelphia Eagles. Yesterday he talked about learning, that he's still learning. And he had been learning and taking good care of the football up until this past week when he turned it over three times, three picks. Does the learning have to go out the window? Do we now have to evaluate Jalen Hurts for just what he is? Or is he still within his rights to say, come on, I just just got over the one year, one full season hump. I'm still a learning guy and you should judge me that way. Is that the way you're judging him? It is the way I'm judging him. Yeah, he certainly has the ability to learn, continue to evolve, get better. You've seen, I mean, one of the best things until the Giants game, as you mentioned, was ball security. He was uh, tremendous uh, up until that game uh, for most of the year compared to the very short sample size as a rookie. Um, you know, but I always say, I, I, Jalen's not saying, you know, evaluate me as a learning quarterback. I say this all the time. You can you can play his um, press conference after the Giants game uh, to after any win. He's the same stinking guy. It's pretty amazing. He always talks about learning. Whether they win, whether they beat the Lions uh, by whatever thirty eight points on Halloween, or blow somebody else out, or or the Denver game was probably uh, you know the happiest this team has been all year. Same, same guy, same guy. It's just a, a, another moment to learn than when he has his worst game of the year. And I think that was his worst game, certainly as a passer, at least. Uh, he was great um, as he normally is as a runner up until getting banged up. Um, he says the same stuff. Uh, but I, I would say there's this weird sort of, you're right. First of all, you, you don't have to say he's the guy, he's not the guy after every week. It's silly. People should stop that. Uh, but you, you you do have the right to say, look, nobody deserves anything. I hear this constant, he deserves the year, he deserves this, he deserves that. You don't want to look at Russell Wilson, you know, Adam Schefter's on – 97.5, wherever he was yesterday, saying, oh, he'd waive his no-trade clause for the Eagles. Uh, Jalen deserves it. No, if you can go get Russell Wilson, go get Russell Wilson. If you can go get Deshaun Watson, a clear Deshaun Watson, we always got to put that caveat on there, go get Deshaun Watson, go get Aaron Rodgers, which isn't going to happen, but whatever. You get my point. If you can go get a player like that, nobody deserves anything. That's what this league is. It's it's production. Um, you're trying to win. Nobody's thinking about eight years down the road in the modern NFL. Everything's at most a three-year picture. You could argue a two-year picture. I don't want to hear about where is he. Russell Wilson's going to be 38 in five years, Jody. I don't give a flying you-know-what. You're going to have to turn it over anyway, most likely. Look what happened to Carson Wentz. You thought you had the answer. A couple of years later, everything goes uh, haywire. Great. If you can get somebody for 20 years, that's awesome. But, you know, that things have sped up dramatically in the NFL uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, and if you can get a player, look at Tampa Bay. I mean, how many teams said, well, obviously Tom Brady's Tom Brady. We all know he's he's the outlier. He's the goat. He's out of it. There were teams in this league, most notably, I'm looking at you, Kyle Shanahan. Well, we can't take a 44 year old guy. What are we? What are we gonna... They win the stinking Super Bowl in year one, Jody. Year one yep. at 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 43, and at 44, they're a significant contender again, or however old he is. I can't even keep it up. Um, I I mean. I don't get that thinking. Nobody deserves anything in this league, and that's why I use the term the FU player. There are certain players that, yeah, great. I love you. You're 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 a great kid. You work hard. You're a leader. You're a natural leader. I think it's more likely than not that Jalen Hurts is the quarterback of this team in in, in 2022 at this point. Um, but if I can get that type of player and that door is open for me, it's FU. I love you, but 
you'll you'll find another gig. You're good enough, and he'll be here as a backup. Or they'll trade him. Right, and that's what they drafted him for was to be a backup anyway. And in year two, he had become the starting quarterback. Uh, so uh, no, no one should say that Jalen Hurts has not been given an opportunity. As a matter of fact, I'm not thinking it's time to cut the learning curve. That uh, Tom Brady probably says, I'm still learning. <laughs> if you don't know it now, buddy, 22 years into your career, shame yeah, on you. But, but that's learning. what that's what people are going to say. I'm still learning. Well, it's a catch-all and it's a cover. And yeah, I'm about <laughs> ready to put the cover full of covers off for Jalen Hurts that if you're still learning, that's a problem. That if you were here last year as a backup, learned a little that you could, standing on the sidelines watching Carson get thrust in and get some good experience, some learning experience in games last year, that was a good thing. We're now two-thirds of the way through the season, and you put an entire season uh, in as a starting quarterback. It's now more about production than it is about learning. It's now more about getting the job done than it is about I'll be better for it down the road. It's about getting points on Sunday versus the New York Jets. And here's the funny thing about it. You say what you want. You say what you hope is happening. You're looking at the best case scenario. Yeah, I think the Eagles are going to win. But again, I think it's because the Jets aren't the good football team. They're not a good defensive team. Uh, their young quarterback has, oh, we talk about learning. Man, he's still very much in the learning curve phase, which Eagles need to take advantage of this weekend. I, I don't even know if we're going to get any more information. You and I have, over the last uh, couple of days, couple of weeks, as a matter of fact, talked about the balancing act that the Eagles have, that they're trying to win games. They're trying to make the playoffs. But they're also trying to learn some things about their players, about whether these are players that they want to commit to again in 2022, 2023. And it's not an easy job that Nick Sirianni has. Sometimes I think the priorities get askew, that there's too much of a lean toward we need to learn something. We need to find out something. We need to get more yeah, information. everything's about the future now. Everything I blame the NBA for that. Everything's about the future. Everything. Well, you can't do what, that. What do you mean the 76ers and the the process? Yeah. Everything's about the future. You can't do this, you can't do that. You know, last year to use the Sixers as an example, oh, you can't go get James Hart. There was that group. You can't give up Tyrese Maxey, who's developing nicely as a is turning into a, a really good young player. You can't give up uh, Matisse Thibel is a great defensive player. You can't get those guys up for James Harden. James Harden, one of the greatest scorers in the history of the NBA, who could have put you over the top if he's healthy. And you know, it, it, people are have lost their minds with the future uh, conversation. It's always about the future. It's never about now. If the window is open, like people are killing the Los Angeles Rams right now because they they've hit the skids and they've hit the skids. Right when they traded for Von Miller and they brought in Odell Beckham Jr. And um, they haven't handled it well over the past month of the season. And they don't have any draft picks and everybody's panicking and everything's on fire. Look, the window was open. They went for it. I applaud them. Does it always work? No, it doesn't always work. But it's never going to work if you don't try. The Eagles are in a different philosophy, but Nick's a different uh, different time in their sort of window. Every, you know, as you know, Jody, sports are cyclical. Everybody's going to have ups. Everybody's going to have downs. Uh, players get old. Great players. One of the hardest things you have to do is transition from a great player and and move on. That was the struggle with the Eagles. They thought their championship window was open, probably a little bit longer than it really was. And that's where they made the mistakes. But Nick Sirianni got asked this question yesterday about that balancing act. That's Howie's job. That's Howie Roseman's job. His job is to win on Sunday. And he said it again, and he made it very clear on, on, on Sunday. My point with the he head coach, though, excuse me, is he's playing an offense he doesn't want to play. He's playing an offense to win games because of what he has. So that is telling to me. When we talk about gathering information, that's information. Right, but here's where, here's where I, I'm 
going to both praise and question Sirianni, at least the way that you just laid it out. He's trying to win with an offense that he doesn't really want to run. No, 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 no. When Sirianni was hired in that first pretty pathetic uh, public appearance <laughs> that he ever made, he sat there and looked in the camera and said, I'm not going to try and put a square peg in a round hole. I'm going to coach to fit the talent that I have. I don't have, uh, several legal coaches have said this, system. What system? We don't have a system. We play determined by who we're playing against or whatever. The flexibility was going to be a key to this Eagle staff, that they weren't going to come in and have this regimented way of winning games. And damn it, we're going to get the exact players to fit that. No, it's impossible to go cherry pick the guys you want from any other team or in the draft. The guys you need are going to be there whenever you come up. No. You have to be able to be flexible and stay open-minded and have different ways to move the football and the like. And Sirianni stood up there day one and said, I'm one of those kind of guys. I'm not going to be the system is my way or the highway. No, I'm, we'll figure it out. We'll make it work. So I'm not going to cut him slack now that, oh, he's got him on a system that he really doesn't want. He can't go too diet tight. He wants I'm not, to go well, three wide you're, you're taking number one. I think that's a positive. I think Nick Sirianni has been true to what he said. Number one, he, he, he hasn't. What I'm trying to say, those two things are not mutually exclusive. What I'm trying to say is that to me, and that's why I call him the best rookie head coach, even though, you know, you could argue Brandon Staley. I think it's been Nick Sirianni. He has. He he has shifted in season. He has shown that flexibility. He is trying to build his offense around the talent he has as best he can. What I'm trying to say is that's not his goal. Every coach should have a philosophy, a DNA. And Jonathan Gannon, who got in trouble for saying, I don't have a scheme, later came back and defined it more clearly. No, you have a philosophy, whether you want to call it a scheme, a DNA, whatever you want to call it, whatever right. term. And you, you're trying this entire time. You're working with your GM. You're, you're, you're conversing. You're trying to get players that fit what you want to do. And it's never perfect, as you said, Jody. Uh, but you get as close as humanly possible. And the gr great coaches, on their route to where they want to go, take advantage of what they have. I think that's been the most, literally the most positive part of Nick Sirianni as a head coach to this point is his ability to be flexible, flexible and, and, and work up a, a, at times, I'm not going to say because at times it's been incompetent, at times competent offense around the talent he has. However, I'm also going to tell you, he doesn't want to run that offense. He runs 11 personnel on the field. He wants explosive passing plays. That's what he wants. He can't do that right now, so he's trying to get through as best as possible. And I concur with everything that you just said. But now we have this week. And Jalen Rager is going to be back out there for 85% of the snaps. <laughs> well, yeah. That... And I'm sorry, that's not flexible, coach. That's not uh, – I, I, I'm doing what I have to do to win games – I'm a well, Sunday guy. Howie Roseman's Remember, got to keep his eye on the future. I don't. I'm the coach. My job is to win games. Well, if your job is to win games this week, Jalen Rager can't be on the field for 85% of your offensive snaps. Well, that's player evaluation. And you and I agree on that. I think, and I've said this on, on Birds 365, I said it on Football 24-7, I've said it all over the place. I think Jalen Rager has played himself off the field. I think you got to try something else. You and I agree on that. The Eagles don't. Nick Sirianni said that very term. He gives us the best chance to win, which tells me they have absolutely no confidence in the Greg Wards of the world, to J.J. Ortega Whitesides, and go down to the John Hightowers, the Deion Keynes, the Keyshawn. They don't have any confidence. Right? I will say that. If they're right, I will say this. That's a Howie Roseman problem because it's obvious – I don't think they're saying Jalen Rager gives us a good chance to win. I think they're saying, yeah, in fact, that's what he said. Jalen Rager gives us the best chance to win. If he were being honest, if you put the true serum in, the rest of that quote would be because we don't have anybody else. And that's the problem. Right. And here's where 
again, splitting roads. I would split roads with the coach, and he's there every single day, and he's working with these guys, and he's at practice, he's and a I'm receivers not. receivers coach. I, former receivers coach. Hey, Greg Boyd's better. I, I'm just sorry. He caught more balls for the field. You weren't here last year, coach. We watched every Eagle game last year, coach. Greg Ward led the Eagles in receptions. I, more than a handful of them from your starting quarterback now, Jalen Rager, in the last couple weeks of the season. Uh, uh, Jalen Hurts in the last couple weeks of the season. Rager was here too last year. And he didn't do anything last year, and he's not doing anything this year. How are we determining he gives us the better chance to win? It sure as hell isn't by going to the tape of this year's games, because the tape on this year's game stinks. So when we're talking about physical attributes, are we talking about the numbers that he put up at TCU? How do you come to that decision? How do well, you a lot that of it evaluation? I talked about, and I, I do think it's fair that, he, you know, the, the strength of this team, and I kind of mentioned it, I don't know if it was yesterday or two days ago, was obviously the running game. And obviously the spacing of the running game is key, and he helps in that aspect, which is not big. I mean, when you're talking about a first-round pick, Obviously, you want, you know, it, it, it's the old when Chip Kelly was here and he talked about Riley Cooper as a blocker, and he was really good as a blocker, Riley Cooper. But when you start talking about receivers, and the same thing with JJ Ortega Whiteside now, when you start talking about receivers who were picked highly in the draft uh, as blockers or as spacers in the running game, um, it isn't good. John, um, John, hold on. Let me, just, let's, let me interrupt you for a second. Can you really look into the camera and tell me you believe that other teams' defensive backs, other teams' defensive coaches are telling their secondary, you better stay right with Rager. You better not worry about the Eagles' running game because Jalen no, Rager can think, beat us, that he's causing these spacing issues, and that's why the Eagles are effective running the ball. Do you think it's that, or do you think it's more Mylotta and Casey and Lane Johnson? I'm going to tell you it's the big beef up front that's made the Eagle running game effective, not the fact that Jalen Rager, because he's a pretty good athlete, keeps the other defense honest and keeps the defense spaced. I, no, I think I, I think what, that's what, a theory. I think there's no reality or reason to believe that it is a, is something that's happening on the field on Sunday. Well, you're 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 boiling it down to Jalen Rager is the reason. Now, what they're saying is the running game is like an 11 man outfit. And in fact, the Eagles, you know, always say, well, we're plus one in the running game because you have to account for the quarterback. So it makes it more difficult. Exactly. Usually it's 11 on 10. It's 11 on 11. So everybody plays a, a, a part in that orchestra. Obviously the most important part is the offensive line blocking. Um, but when you're running a lot of RPOs, when you're running a lot of zone read stuff, you know, as we saw early in the season, a, a pass play is a run play and a vice versa and this and that, and they try to say all this stuff. The spacing is very important, and one of the reasons they wanted speed on the field, they were talking about this, so forget about the names. They wanted speed on the field. Doug Peterson wanted speed on the field. Uh, Nick Sirianni wants speed on the field. That's one of the reasons they want speed on the field because you, you have better spacing because you have to deal with all these things as a, as a defense. It's not because of Jalen Rager. They're successful in the running game. They want his traits on the field. They think his traits are important on the field. I get what you're saying. He's not productive. I'm the one who said he's played himself off the field. I would try John Hightower because he's he gives you that same trait as far as speed. Uh, if that's what you want on the field, I would go towards John Hightower. I'm just nestling this down to the one comparison, which is kind of comical in a way because he's the leader of the receiver room. He wasn't even a receiver. He was a quarterback, and I've talked – they should have had a veteran presence in that receiver room, which I think is Howie Rosen's maybe biggest mistake when he put together this roster. I'm just trying to get you into their level of thinking and what they're thinking. They want that trait on the field, and they're not going to tr take that trait off the field for a guy who can't run and a guy who's not going to produce. And remember, and I, I, mean, I got – not going to produce – 
was Greg Ward not the Eagles' leading wide receiver last yeah, year? Yeah, but Jody, uh, this is where I was going to go next. Remember, Nick, I, I got Nick to go on record with this on purpose, on purpose because he said it behind the scenes, but you can't say it until he says it. Now he said it, so I can direct everybody to it. Everything starts with 88 and 6. Those are the receivers on this team, Dallas Goddard, Devontae Smith, 88 and 6. That's what they game plan for. That's what, believe it or not, Doug Peterson, because he had nothing at the receiver position, nothing would often game plan at the end at times, not often, but at times for Greg Ward to get the football. In this offense right now, nobody's getting the football on except Devontae Smith or Dallas Goddard Unless what happens, you know, Patrick Graham did a great job. And that was one of the things that people were criticizing Nick Sirianni for. He tried to evolve the offense against a bad team and get other people involved, and it didn't work. He's going to default back to 6 and 88, 88 and 6, and nobody else is going to get targets because nobody else deserves targets. Right. But here, John, here's here we're going around in circles. It's all about uh, Devante and uh, Goddard until the other team decides to double them both. And then guess what? It has to become about somebody else. You can have this philosophy and the play. Well, not can be if you run the ball. When the final play was run the other day, the ball went to 18, right? The ball was thrown. To, it wasn't thrown to Devontae Smith. It wasn't thrown to Goddard. It was thrown to Rager because the other team was good enough to take your two top options away from you, well, then you can't say it's all about. No, it's mostly about. We try to make it all about, but you can't do that in the National Football League game. If you're going to have other wide receivers out there and they're on the field and they're running patterns, there's a possibility the quarterback may decide to throw the football their way. They did on that play, and Ray Craig couldn't make the catch. Yeah, I mean, I'm not defending Jalen Rager's play. I, I'm, 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 again, I'm just trying to, to get you behind their thought process and why they think he's their best opportunity to win. Um, it, it has to do more with the running game and what they're accomplishing in the running game, the passing game, which he's done nothing, uh, which isn't good. Um, look, they need a better player. They need a better third receiver, but. That but by the way, they need a better second receiver. Second receiver yeah. Quest Watkins isn't good. I hate to break it to people. That route he ran at the end of the game was awful. Awful. Um, they got to get better at that position, and it's unbelievable. That's what's getting lost in the weeds here, considering how much draft capital they've spent at that position. First round pick, first round pick, second round pick. And they still need two receivers. It's awful. Yeah, that's pretty damn sad, and that is on Harry Roseman. But, uh, but they don't I, want. I, I look. I know. I know you're a Greg Ward guy. They don't want him on the field. I don't know how other way to say. And you've heard it from many people besides me who cover this team every day. They respect. They think he has a role on this team as a leader and as a role player and as a guy who can catch the football when it's thrown to him if it's not a hundred miles an hour at the goal line, uh, and he's got better hands than probably any other receiver on this team uh, besides Devontae Smith, even though he's a quarterback by trade. Um, but they don't want him on the field. They want, it, they, want, they want a more dynamic presence on the field. Right, and my point is dynamic presence – must actually make dynamic plays. Otherwise, you're not a dynamic. Well, it would player. be nice. You're, you're you're on a scouting report that you're a dynamic. No, you're player. not a dynamic. You actually player. have to make dynamic plays to be considered a dynamic pressure uh, player in Jody McDonald's world. And oh, by the way, Brego never makes any dynamic plays. So no, to no. me, he's not a dynamic player. I've watched. No, I didn't say player. I said present. Plays. I said present. He's a guy who can run. Is basically what he is at this point. Okay, you so can run. Now, now determining who gets reps in the Eagles wide receivers because of their stop time on a stopwatch. Well, now, no, I thank mean, you. That, 
No, that's uh, that's that's part of what the trait they want on the field. They would like to have a player who could play, but they feel they don't have a player who can play, so they don't want to take that speed off the field. Right. I, I I want to determine who I'm going to put out there and give chances to perform by actual performances made previously in the uniform of the Philadelphia Eagles rather than what a scout said about them when they were at college and the fact that they Well, also when Nick got here... Back. When when Nick got here, um, because remember he wasn't here last year. Um, I mean Jalen, he did have Jalen for a training camp, and that's where you evaluate. And whatever off season they did have, even though it was dramatically scaled back, and that's where you teach and evaluate. And he is a receivers coach. We, we go back to that one hundred catch, uh, one hundred catch. Is that why Jalen Rager's playing? Because he made a one-handed no. catch against he made his two. teammate he in made... practice. Is that what you can tell me, J-Mac? No, I wasn't even going there. But he made two one-handed catches. <laughs> no, where I was going, where I was going is he he played better uh, than Greg Ward on a daily basis um, during training camp. Now it hasn't turned out well. He played better than John Hightower. John Hightower, for instance, was awful in training camp. Um, and he lost his job. Um, you know, it's not like, it, it, you know, you're right. I mean, at the end of the day, who cares about practice? But it does matter as far as, you know, getting in the eye of the coach and, and this and that. And they do place weight on that. And he's obviously struggling with confidence issues. And by the way, I can't believe I'm defending Jalen Rager. I'm the one who said they should bench him. But uh, uh, their their whole reliance on Jalen Rager relates on on two things: the trait I told you, but more importantly, more importantly than that, far more importantly, if you want to put a percentage on it, I would say ninety ten. The far more important part of it is. They just don't think they have anybody better from an evaluation standpoint. And everybody on this team, because I've, you know, I've been covering this league for a long time. I've seen a lot of practices. I've watched a lot of film. I've talked to a lot of coaches. But I'm not going to sit here and say I know more about the wide receiver position than Nick Sirianni. I mean, that's his position. That's what he grew up on. That's what he coached. That's what he played. He knows – what you have to do to play that position well, I do give him some deference when it comes to evaluating that position. I know he's not happy with the way he's playing, but when he does tell me that we don't have a better option, uh, I tend to probably agree with him. And by the way, Jody, I still go to the point, you know what? I'm still trying John Hightower. Just, you know, maybe it's just the competence issue. Maybe because he's got no confidence. That's what happened to Nelson Aguilar as well. He just lost his confidence. Uh, Do you think that Greg Ward got worse since last year? Uh, No, I think he's the same guy. And if he led the Eagles or inceptions last year. Yeah, but last year doesn't matter. Different coaching staff, different team. Devontae Smith's here. uh, Different roles, different, uh, you know, they do have one real receiver. Uh, so everybody gets knocked down a bunch. Uh, Devontae's, you know, you're going to want to move him around. You're going to want him in the slot. Greg can't play out slot. It, it, next, last season doesn't have anything to do with this season, even more so than normal because of the change in the coaching staff. Yeah, fair enough. If the coach is uh, going to – if here's my issue. Here would be my problem. Nick Sirianni, former receiver coach, watches these guys every day, and he thinks Jalen Rager can make plays for him. I don't okay. know. Again, yeah. I, well, I know I, I don't have his resume, but I have the results well, on Sunday. I, and again, at, I think and the missed, results are that Jalen Rager stinks. I Well, I don't know how you get from he gives us the best opportunity to win. Again, if you put the true serum, because we don't have anybody else, and that he's a guy who can make plays. I, I don't think I've ever heard him say, he's a guy who's going to make plays. He's a guy who's going to turn into a star. Tells me all the time Devontae Smith is going to be a star. 
Doesn't tell me that about Jalen Rager. Understood. But somebody's got to go out there. You're telling me he's dying to play uh, with uh, three wide receivers, if not four. So you got to have somebody. Um, and you got to have somebody out there. And that's Rager what they have. They have a placeholder out there. They have, that's probably the best, best way of describing this. They're having a placeholder, really two placeholders out there. So you tell like, so you tell me how he's going to use a first round pick on a wide receiver. Their wide receivers suck so bad that no, they acknowledge they are, that they suck so bad. They're going to use a first round pick no, on a wide receiver. But they are they are going to sign a a receiver in free agency. Okay. I am going to go on record with that right now. And they're going to draft a receiver. I just don't think they'll draft a, another one in the first round. All right, Johnny Mac, Jody Mac, talk a lot about Jalen Rager here on. Birds 365. Too today. much. We need to get to, to the Jets. That's who they're playing on. Because I know the Jets. I'm going to tell you, guarantee when Brian Costello is going to join us in less than 15 minutes, jumps on, he's going to tell us the Jets are going to make sure that Jalen Rager doesn't beat him on Sunday. That they will be rolling <laughs> hard. Jalen Rager. I, 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 I they would, are petrified of Jalen Rager. We've been on the air for 58 minutes. I defy anybody to find me saying Jalen Rager is going to. Uh, be a impact on this game or the Jets or what they do. I think my words have been misconstrued. I didn't say you said that. I'm <laughs> just uh, talking off the top of my head. Uh, you, Nick Sirianni, anybody else who has any leaning toward Jalen Rager can help the Eagles win games. Give them a better chance to. to win than Greg Ward, J.J. Ortega Whiteside, John Hightower, Dion Cole. I'd rather see Deshaun Mike Johnson. Quick come down out of the broadcast booth and put on pads and attempt to make a play than Jalen Rager at this point. I take Rager over Mike Quick right now. Right I take, now. I take Mike Quick right now. All right. Uh, we are Mac and Mac. We'll take a quickie timeout. Come back. Uh, yes. Brian Costello, Jets beat writer for the New York Post. Uh, does Jets reports on WFAN up in New York. He's going to join us coming up in uh, about 10, 12 minutes here on Birds. 